they had gone to see the grounds because their competitors were well, that, well, that could be a yeah. factor. That could be a factor. Competitors I are think on that, the ground working. So I think that you are sitting in Palo Alto reading the paper. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your competitor is campaigning. You are in Palo reading paper. Okay. So, government plans to spend $7.7 billion uh, in excess of that into flagship programs next year or on flagship programs next year. These include free senior high school, infrastructure for poverty, uh, eradication program, road infrastructure, national builders corps, school feeding program, planting for food and jobs, livelihood empowerment against poverty, that's LEAP. And also, it talks about the... Um, Fish landing sites, microfinance and small loan cent uh, center, Maslock, one district, one factory initiative, railway development, national identification authority, capitalization of new regions, Zongo development fund, water sanitation, teacher training allowances, and nursing training allowances. Okay, so there's also the elements yesterday that Sam George raised about some six million being used for communication. But Eric, is this enough per the appetite that Ghanaian seems to have? gotten for for example free shs next year the next cohort will go in there planting for food and jobs we're seeing bumper harvest so a lot more people may want to go in there uh one district one factory the ambulances are in Ghanaians are getting a bigger appetite is this enough to to cushion you enough and, and do more as expected of you well uh, thank you very much good morning to yourself uh, good morning to felix and also to the viewers of uh, tv3 mm -hmm. Uh, this morning. Um, of course, I mean, I'm sure that you appreciate the fact that uh, when it comes to these things, mm -hmm. uh, if you like the infrastructure aspect of it and the uh, policy interventions and the other social uh, interventions, mm -hmm. it can never really be enough, right? Because um, if you like, we have an insatiable appetite. And so uh, you would say that maybe if we're able to generate a lot more resources, mm -hmm. it would still go into <coughs> investment into these sectors. But these are priority areas that has been identified mm -hmm. by government, and that was presented uh, eloquently by the finance minister mm -hmm. in terms of what government's um, if you like, vision is mm -hmm. for the year 2020. Uh, so if you look at where we've come from in terms of the other programs, you mentioned it, we're talking about 1D1F, the IPEP, the quest, everywhere you go, people are calling for mm -hmm. uh, road uh, infrastructure and projects to be done in, within their various mm -hmm. communities and all that. What we want to do in terms of engendering some kind of social justice with the LEAP program and all of those are, all of these things are important things. Mm -hmm. But because you'd have a certain limited uh, budget in terms of resources, you would have to find a way of uh, harmonizing or if you like rationalizing the various sectors to make sure that at least there's investment going into these sectors that would generate the growth that we want mm. and stimulate the development that we want. So for me, I think that um, once we're able to generate the, the revenues mm -hmm. and it's commensurate to what government has projected, then we are in for um, a good 2020. Um, that in itself really would also be uh, predicated on government's commitment to make sure that we do not overspend so we uh, ensure some <coughs> level of fiscal <coughs> discipline so that it doesn't throw the, the whole economy mm -hmm. into some kind of uh, disarray. So really I think that what the uh, business finder has done is to go into the budget and mm -hmm. uh, drill down to specifics in terms of what the major right. uh, interventions are. Mm -hmm. um, as to it being enough, I'm sure that even once you move from one community mm -hmm. to the other, there are various um, social amenities, infrastructure uh, projects that they require, some direct specific intervention. Sometimes you have issues to do with um, contingencies and all of those things, which still has to be catered for by government. But so, so, by, so, and, by so, and large, mm. I feel that it's a step in the right direction. Somebody would ask a question. What do you have to show for what we gave you last year for these same initiatives? LEAP, uh, teacher training allowances, fish landing sites, blah, blah, blah. No, what, what do you have to show? What do you mean? I mean, you have to <clears throat> clarify that particular So, uh, one district, one factory yeah. is a key initiative. Yeah. You're putting money in there. What do you have to show? Where are the factories? We saw Kojo with uh, uh, 
a, a box of uh, eco cool juice yeah. in Parliament. But is that all we have to show? No, no, of course not. I mean, I mean, I think that this whole conversation around the 1D1F is a very simple uh, process. The areas where these factories are and the communities that are uh, in close proximity to these um, mm. factories, they're there for everybody to appreciate. Okay. And then, of course, like the ministry has actually stated, mm. there are other ones in various stages of completion. That notwithstanding, I mean, if you're talking about LEAP, these are direct interventions that are given to people mm. who are marginalized, who come from poor uh, uh, households and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Government has actually made a commitment to actually increase that and even expand the, the numbers who um, are going to benefit from mm. that. So you're talking about ambulances, for instance. It's become some kind of, uh, if you like, topic of um, mm. conversation. Started just by, here, of yeah, course. By virtue of the fact that well, we need to make sure that at least every community would have yeah. access to ambulances. These are things that are essential because, I mean, if for one reason or the other there's an emergency, people are able to have access to that and save, would save okay. <coughs> pregnant women and all of those okay. things. First land in sites. We've been talking about the National Identification mm. Authority and the uh, importance of having <coughs> an identification that is fit for purpose okay. for 2019. We are talking about um, taking the economy away from the informal sector mm. into a formal sector. That means that you have to be able to identify people, you have to be able to expand mm. your tax bracket, you have to be able to know where people are so that you'll be able to expand government services. Very well, and all thank you. Things. Thank so, you, Eric. So Grateful. for me, I think that if you look at it from the, the visions and the purposes for the reason why there's a, a commitment to do these things. I mean, Zongo Development Fund. Thank you. Those are Thank you. Felix, take, take a bite on, on this one. Government intends to spend 7.7 .7 billion. Uh, quite huge. But I, I, and then I'll ask you, is this enough for what government seeks to do, number one? And then number two, are you satisfied with what government has shown you so far, with what we gave them last year to do these same things? Well, let me start off by saying that it is important that we tamper expectations because what has been put forward is only a projection. Um, the budget yeah, statement yeah. itself was only an indication of what government thinks it will get in mm -hmm. terms of revenue mm -hmm. and how it intends to spend it. Uh, it is by no means conclusive that, first of all, those monies will be realized. And, and, and for that matter, the expenditure, or at least the amount of money dedicated to expenditure would actually be expended. So we need to tamper expectations. We don't create expectations that would not be met. And this government is quite fond of that. They like to talk big <laughs> and completely <laughs> underachieve. Um, also, you asked the question about whether or not this is enough. It is woefully inadequate <coughs> compared to what we have given this government. You know, there's a biblical saying that to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm. The reality is that if you look at the amount of time that this government has been in position, in power, and the amount of resources that they've had. They have been the most resourced government in our history. In the last three years alone, mm -hmm. if you do an aggregation of all the amount of money that has come to, them. to this government, we are talking in excess of 200 billion Ghana cities. Um, during the budget presentation, the finance minister claimed that they had put 12.2 billion Ghana cities in the pockets of Ghanaians. In other words, out of the 200 billion Ghana cities that we had given them, mm -hmm. only 12.2 billion could be accounted for in terms of monies that they had expended on the promises that they made to the people of Ghana. As to whether or not those promises were actually fulfilled, at least in the manner mm -hmm. that it was promised, is another matter. I'll get into you, it. You are only saying that. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. Now, if you look at the amount of fiscal measures, mm -hmm. or what we call taxes and levies, and other measures that this government has used to take money out of the pockets of Ghanaians, you find that the seven point is it seven point one billion seven point seven billion that is being bandied about is a drop in the ocean. In the last three years alone, if you put together all the taxes that this government has imposed mm -hmm. and the other measures, we are talking of twenty seven point one nine seven billion Ghana cities. That is how much they have taken from the pockets of the ordinary man. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a breakdown. For instance, they announced the decoupling of any child and get fund in the mid year budget right. of twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. That alone has yielded them 2.6 billion. 
The larger car tax, which they scrapped after President Mama indicated that he would scrap it, has given them 60.6 .6 million Ghana cities. The extension of the national fiscal stabilization levy mm -hmm. and the special import levy has yielded them 321.4 million Ghana cities. CST, the extension of CST, or even the collection of CST alone, has given them 107.1 million. The increase in ESLA in the media budget will yield them 436 million. Uh, utility price adjustments will rake in 9 billion Ghana cities. Four price increases, 13.6 billion Ghana cities. And then, of course, transport first, if you consider the totality and how much it will cost Ghana. There's a billion Ghana cities. So after getting 27 billion Ghana cities, you flaunt 7.7 .7 billion Ghana cities and tell me that that is what you will be doing for the people of Ghana. It is woefully inadequate. You, you can't it's, spend everything you get. <laughs> that is true. But you see, the but expenditure, very... you see, the expenditure must reflect the amount of money you are getting. Mm -hmm. That's why I said that to whom much is given, much is expected. is expected. Now, if you look at the items that have been listed, they are mostly consumption-related expenditure. And it must be put on record that the MPP took a position against consumption when they were in opposition. When I say consumption, I mean recurrent expenditure, mm. money that you have to spend every right. year, mm. as opposed to putting it in capital investments, which are one-off investments, but that yield dividends over the years. The roads are there. Well, I'll come to that. Landing. So I'll, come to, I'll come to that. Beaches. Now, these are woefully inadequate mm. in terms of what <laughs> the citizenry is looking forward to. Only yesterday, mm -hmm. The CDD launched an Afrobarometer report in which they found mm -hmm. that up to 26%, that is the highest number of respondents, say that the most critical need that they have now is road infrastructure. Which then suggests that the NDC was right all along when it invested heavily in infrastructure. But the has promised well, in 2020. well, what we have now is only a promise on paper. You don't believe the promise. Why? You see, for me to believe the promise, I must look at what they've done before. In the 2019 budget, they listed over 100 road projects. Mm. Not one of them was done. In fact, they promised an interchange at Koforidua. Mm. It never happened. 100 projects and more, not one of them was executed. Mm. Check the 2019 budget. So they have simply gone to lift those same pages mm. and put them in the 2020 budget. When you ask them about a funding line, they say, oh, Sino Hydro. Meanwhile, as I speak to you, Last year or so, they took a bill to Parliament to approve about $640 million mm -hmm. as the first tranche of the Sino Hydro deal. It has taken over a year for them to come and tell us that Sino Hydro has approved money for the first lots, I think about four or so. Mm -hmm. Now, they are unable to tell us exactly how much money has been released. Yet, if you look at the list of roads that they've provided mm -hmm. and the amount of money required to fix those roads, that Sino Hydro money will be woefully inadequate. So what it means is that Ghanaians must brace themselves for major disappointment in terms of road construction. Now, But, but we have the road fund to support. That right? is true. But the question you need to ask is that how come that in the last three years, despite the existence of the road fund, let me clarify that in 2015, because of our introduction of ESLA, which they vehemently opposed, mm -hmm. the road fund now accrues 1.2 billion Ghana cities every year. So in the last three years, they've had 3.6 billion. Instead of applying those monies, to addressing concerns in the road sector. They have capped it and are channeling part of that money into what we call consumption-related expenditure. It is the reason why the roads are in such bad shape. Again, when they came to power, the NDC had started over 100 road projects under a 3 billion Ghana city cocoa road project. One of them is the whole Jasikan, Hawaii to Jasikan to the mm -hmm. Pepe Road. Mm -hmm. The sword was cut for it. It was awarded in two lots to a contractor called Rolida, mm. between from Hohoe to Jasika and then Jasika to the Pepeso. The contractor had actually started work on the Hohoe to Jasika road. They had done the first, uh, what do you call it, uh, part of work. Mm. They were only going to fail. When an order came from the MPP government that all the cocoa roads should be halted, pending an investigation, because they claimed that, again, the roads contracts had been inflated. Mm. They spent $10 million, which is 50 million Ghana cities on an audit that turned out absolutely no evidence of inflation. So they wasted three years of our time, caused the roads to be badly deteriorated, and then have gone to cut sod again on road projects on which sod has already been cut and work has begun. So, and 50 million Ghana, uh, Ghana cities could have constructed a number of feeder roads at least. 
So they have been very wasteful in the management of our resources and have left the people wallowing in severe hardship. They look say, at, they say the at roads no, that, the no, roads no, that, no, the no, roads no, that, no, the no, roads no, that, the roads 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 that, Maybe so how many minutes did you give me? Fifteen. You didn't check. You started no, at seven three. Uh -huh. You finished at seven fourteen. Yeah. Okay. So he has two minutes. Exactly. So no, 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 no. I don't. <laughs> seven fourteen means I have to speak up to so, seven twenty. So, yeah. but I'm asking you, mm -hmm. Felix. Yeah. The MPP says, look, the roads that you paraded or advertised in your green book, mm -hmm. if you had indeed done them, <laughs> they wouldn't have come back to say we are cutting soil for the roads that you claim you have done. What you see, do you again, say? first of all, that is an Absolute falsehood, and I have thrown the challenge before from President Akufuado to the last person in the MPP. I invite them to a debate on this your platform. Let them point out one road in the Green Book which does not exist. You see, sometimes we have to be fair to ourselves. Mm. The MPP likes to engage in very comical governance. You have a whole vice president go and stand at who and say that the record of the NDC in roads is abysmal. He and his boss, the president, do not have a single major road to their name. President Mama has a plethora of them. One of them is the Nkuma Interchange, on which the president wrote <laughs> when he was going to Obeche Blamte to cut the sword for the Obeche Blamte Interchange, mm. which President Mama found money for. All the major interchange projects taking place in the city mm. were projects that President Mama found money for. The Tema Interchange, it was a ticket in 2015 that President Mama negotiated. And so the Japanese government brought us $56 million to mm -hmm. do it. The Pokwasi Interchange, we got $84 million in November of 2016 to do it. In addition to that, look at the Gifford Road. That is from Burma Camp to the La, T-Junction. Mm. Look at the Burma Camp uh, uh, bypass, phase one and phase two, which leads up to the, what do you call it, um, the junction around the Palace Mall. Mm. Look at the, uh, what do you call it, Tetekwashi uh, bypass. And all the major road projects that were constructed within the city. We even came to meet roads that they had started. The gang of all roads. We had to go and borrow 400 million Ghana cities to complete those. Why? There was no money? They, because they, they were done on government of Ghana uh, funding, mm. which means that there was no dedicated line of funding. So we had to raise bonds, 400 million Ghana cities, which added to our public debt. The very debt that they insulted, sorry, they criticized us for, included monies that we had to borrow to complete their projects. Okay, wrap up for Again, me. go, go, look, the, the, the Fufusu Solar Road. Mm. I was on it about a month ago. Fantastic road, 147 kilometers. See, have well, the well, no, 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 no. There was a segment that had developed portals, which is normal. But roads are meant is it, is to be maintained. It, is it normal? No, Johnny, Johnny, roads are meant is it to be normal? maintained. Listen, listen to me carefully. Roads are meant to be maintained. But they come with a listen, guarantee listen, when, listen, they are put, listen, they are, when they are constructed. Johnny, you're not listening to me. Normal, you're not listening to me. You travel roads, a lot. I beg your pardon. Allow him. Look, I have seen So you say roads are meant to be maintained. Johnny, I have seen portals in the streets in London, in Scotland, in many places that I have been in New York. And how, what old, happens how is that, old were those roads? Listen to me. How, what happens is that the roads must be maintained. Since they've been in power, they've suspended all road projects for three, three but, years. But I'm saying, I'm, so submit, they are going to I'm deteriorate. submitting to you, Mr. Kwachu, for that, that look, when, when you award mm -hmm. a contract mm -hmm. for a road to be constructed, mm -hmm. You know that there's always guarantee after the road mm -hmm. is constructed. Exactly. Absolutely. Between yes, but after five years, the roads can start but developing. But, 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 but that road how, was constructed sometime in 2014, 2015. That's okay. when the road was con constructed. That okay. was when it was completed. So it's okay for part of but it. But I'm to saying work. that so if a part develops a fault, it is not listen to me. Oh You see, we have to move away from the pedestrian propaganda that we do. Okay. When a contractor does a project and a fault develops, all you need to do is to draw his attention to go back to repair it. End of story. It is not, you cannot say that because of that fault that has developed in that very tiny section. It's a very, very tiny, tiny section. section. I use that road it means that that road has not been constructed. You do not have a single major road to your name. You, you produce a list of 100 roads in the budget. You okay. don't construct one. And then your vice president can go in a comical fashion, stand on the platform and claim that his predecessor's record is abysmal. Why you don't have a single road project to show? Okay, thank you. Right. Eric, take one minute. Go uh, to the Western I'll, give, I'll give him one minute yeah, as well. Yeah, or maybe right. two, two, and then we will... We'll wrap. You're starting at 26, so 28 will <laughs> end. And I think that I need to start doing this now. Well, maybe that would help. So it, so that everybody very, doesn't come and it's, say, it's, it's oh. It's very sad that, I mean, Felix actually chose to go that route. Now, this question that you asked in mm. terms of if it was woefully inadequate mm. or if it was mm. adequate or everything has to be premised on a budget.
And we sit here, I mean, I can sit here and you know, on a cashier look that. Out of every, let's say, uh, one Ghana CD that we earn as a country mm -hmm. in terms of revenue, about 60% or 65% goes into payment of public sector wages. Mm -hmm. Then you have issues to do with statutory payments. Mm -hmm. Then you have issues to do with uh, interest on loans, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you take the budget itself and then you, you want to be uh, very, if you like, uh, pragmatic about mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain percentage of that money that can go into the investment. This whole idea of something is consumption mm -hmm. and something is capital or infrastructure, uh, investment and all of those things, mm -hmm. it's really semantics if you ask me. Is it? No, because you see, the, 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 we have to be very candid with ourselves. And mm -hmm. we, because when, once we, we get opportunities on these platforms, mm -hmm. right? And you create the impression that this is the amount of money that has come into the, the, the government's coffers, for mm -hmm. instance, mm -hmm. and that just a small uh, amount of that is going into investment without actually painting the, the picture. What is the picture? And the picture is, 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 is simple, that government cannot use all the money that it raises to invest into infrastructure projects like that because there are other commitments. Mm. We spoke about statutory payments, right. uh, interest payments which, on Which you said you have capped. Yes, you have we capped. have issues to do with public sector wages and investing in our public sector and all mm, that. Mm. You just read the news that 14,500 teachers just, have been right. employed. They mm -hmm. have to be paid for. Okay. You understand? Then apart then, from that, in all of these things, mm -hmm. right, this is a government that has committed to uh, executing the 1D1F, free SHS, that has got 1.2 million beneficiaries, mm -hmm. the NIA, National Identification Authority. Now, under their watch, in, within eight years, how many cars did they even distribute. They couldn't do it. Issues to do with planting for food and jobs. You have sat here and admitted that there's actually a lot of food in the system. There's almost a glut where plans are being put in place to make sure that there's um, storage facilities at every district and also the quest to industrialize by adding value to the raw materials that we produce. We were having a conversation about rice yesterday, plantain, yam, and all of those. And I follow you guys. You know, the <coughs> Uh, issues to do, he was talking about nursing training allowance, teacher training mm -hmm. allowance. These are motivations for young people to go through okay. various Thank you. Uh, your time to be able is to up. come and uh, contribute their Thank quota you. to the development Felix, of this country. Take your two minutes. The NAPCO, 100,000 young people have had an opportunity. Are they, 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 they 100,000? Yes, they are 100,000. No, under, they are not 100,000. Under, under they are not 100,000. Listen, well, if you, you promised 100,000. There, there's 100,000 100, people. No, you promised to NAPCO. Of course, over the period. NAPCO, listen, but over the period. Some thousand. of them have found work and other no, interventions and I, have left the scheme. You promised 100,000, but, I'm saying, but saying, there are no 100,000. What I am saying, facts, saying, facts are facts. What I'm saying for a fact mm. is that, under your, your watch, you had a graduate unemployment association, okay. right? Because you had taken us to the IMF by dint of the mismanagement <laughs> okay, of the economy thank you. and have some Thank you very your, much. Felix, your, your take, take, your, economy take your two works, minutes. It's 29 right? now. And the government has come into uh, power. Has managed actually. to come out of the it's IMF. 30. Allow him. Right? Allow him to take then two minutes. Then F3SHS, I'll give you two then minutes. 1D1F you. has uh, if, but if you take all the time, I'll take it from your next. I'll take it from your next. Exactly. All of these things. Okay. Mr. Kwachu Fosu, take your two minutes. All of that put together is 7.7 billion, as you have told us. Yeah, but how are you going to pay for the workers? How are you going to pay for some of the debts that you incurred that has been paid for? Eric, allow him. What about statutory payments? So, you see, when we get an opportunity like that, let's not hide behind just mere politics. That's why I gave you the opportunity. But you are finished speaking. So, allow him to speak. And he knows it. But you are finished speaking. You see, I have done nothing more than to hold the MPP to the very standards that they use to assess us. Which is mm. fine. Absolutely. So let me make my point. Your vice president, Dr. Baumia. He's a vice, vice president of the Allow him. Allow him. Are you, him. Allow him. Are you going Eric. to respond to every line that I... Okay. Okay. Go ahead. The He's vice president, Dr. Baumia. Mm. He was your vice presidential candidate at the time. He stood in parliament in 2016 and condemned consumption-related expenditure. Mm. He peddled an outright falsehood that we were borrowing to finance consumption. At the time, mm. we were carrying out the largest capital investment in the history of the Fourth Republic. Mm -hmm. So he peddled an untruth, and his central point was that we were borrowing to finance consumption, which was wrong. Mm -hmm. So when you come to power, and we give you 200 billion Ghana cities mm -hmm. over three years, mm -hmm. and all you can show us is 7.7 .7 billion in mostly consumption-related expenditure, you cannot cite statutory payments, because every government has had to meet statutory payments. Yeah, when we're in power, when we're in power, listen, we, we inherited a single spine salary structure, mm -hmm. which 
created a quantum leap in the amount of money that we, at a point we're paying 12 to 13 billion Ghana cities annually in salary payments. The Ghanaian worker is happy. Great. But the point, Why are you not happy? Yes. Oh, of course, we don't have a difficulty with it. But the point I'm making is that we pay salaries too. Mm -hmm. We met statutory payments. We paid for interest. At a point, we were paying about 16 billion Ghana cities in interest a year okay. on the loans that we had contracted. So okay. all these payments have confronted every government. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, we were able to create space to make massive capital investments, which you are unable to do. But the central point is that at this stage, Ghanaians see that what matters to them most, at least according to the Afrobiometer report, mm -hmm. is infrastructure, especially roads. Right. And let me put this beyond doubt that that whole Huawei to just kind of the purpose road started in terms of construction mm -hmm. on 7 December 2015 by Rolida, the same contractor who is mm -hmm. going on site mm -hmm. now. They suspended it in 2017. It is a reason why that road has stalled. Mm -hmm. So let them not come here and create the impression that they've done something new. Again, as for these uh, slogans, one district, one factory, yeah. one, look, they have not fulfilled those promises. Oh, how? Only you yesterday. You see I, the fruit juice in parliament. I beg your pardon. You see, before the MPP came to power, factories had been built in Ghana. When we were in power, under the free zones and clave alone, mm. there were over 60 to 70 new factories. There was one factory at Ishim in the Western region mm. by a Chinese firm, costing about $60 million to construct. And they make towels mm. in quantities that no other entity in West Africa does. Mm. Some of the biggest cocoa processing companies, Barry Calibo and mm. the rest, mm. all came to set up shop in Ghana. So we promised to build a factory in each district. What I look forward to is that by your third year, we should be getting to about 150 factories built from scratch. Is, is it, you don't is go and it, provide... It's a process, is it not? No, no, no. Now they say it's 58 factories that are up and running. But if you go and examine those factories, they are not new factories built from scratch. Some, most of them, actually, are existing factories that they've gone to attach themselves to. But that is not the promise you made. You promised to build okay. a dam in each village. Okay. Johnny, there are about 6,000 villages in the northern, upper east, upper west region at the time they made the promise. In the budget, the minister says they've done only 200. Even those 200 are daggers, not dams. You promised to send a million dollars to each constituency. By the third year, and by the end of this year, we expected... $825 million in transfers. The Minister of Information has admitted publicly that in 2017, nothing went. In 2018, only 35 million Ghana cities went. Out of out of uh, $275 okay, thank million. You. Dollars. Thank you very so much. So they but, will but not the be able to meet... are here. They are part of the Danny, one million it is okay, one constituency. But it is not the first time that ambulances have come into Ghana. President Gufo brought ambulances. Okay. Thank President you. Mills did. Thank you. President Bama did. But most importantly, mm. ambulances will not convey people who are unwell to trees to be treated. They have to be taken to hospitals. We have built hospitals, bequeathed them to you. Even the ones that we've completed, you're unable to operationalize them. And so people are turned away because there are no beds. When the hospitals are, 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 are gathering... Okay, this. thank you. So I don't know what they want to be built about, the, honestly. The graphic business this morning also reports that the 2020 revenue projection is too ambitious. Uh, Dr. Sesebe, the Professor Sesebe, an Associate Professor of Department of Economics of the University of Ghana, Professor Eric Sesebe, has raised doubts about the government's ability to raise $67 billion in 2020. He said the revenue projection was too ambitious considering the fact that the government did not introduce any aggressive revenue measures in the budget to meet this target. Speaking uh, in an interview with a graphic business, he says the issue of revenue is still a problem and this year we will not be able to meet the revenue target of uh, 58 billion as it has been revised down to 54 billion and yet we are projecting a revenue of 67 billion for 2020. Eric, if you couldn't get 58, you beat it down to 54, uh, and now you're doing what, 67? Professor says you are biting more than you can chew. You see, um, when we start talking about economics, mm. it's, uh, it becomes intellectual, right? Yes. I mean, so, and there are some fundamentals that you can't run away from. Mm. I mean, when I'm, I'm here with my friend, we can do the politics, but mm. the fundamentals does not change. Mm -hmm. Even if you go back to, let's say, from 2017 till date, mm. revenue mobilization has actually increased. It's just, a, it's just that those projections and I mean, targets that have been set uh, have been ambitious. Mm. So we are not able to meet those targets. But in terms of, if you like, real figures and real nominal figures, they, they have done well in terms of being able to generate more mm. year on year. Now, this is ambitious, um, it's a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, government has actually also 
uh, looked at areas of making sure that there's some compliance and people are able to pay and making it easier for people to pay. There are all sorts of things that have been done over the period or issues to with tax stamps. Mm -hmm. um, there's a way that there's a conversation surrounding uh, the issuance of these tax mm -hmm. exemptions mm -hmm. and all of those mm -hmm. and then right. making sure that it's right. Like, yeah. So for me, again, um, it's an intellectual opinion that has been expressed by But, but he Dr. says that, look, if SCB, he looks at your budget statement, he doesn't see any aggressive measure. Yeah, but that you see that aggressive, you see, so even you, if... So you have been talking, for with, example, with, in the Ejuma budget, in the Asempa budget, on how to bring in the informal sector. Yeah. Because for every 18 of us, one person is paying tax, 17 people are not paying tax. Exactly. It's a very... And he says, I mean, like, he, in 2020, we still are not seeing you so, so if you look widening at, the if net you, to If you look them. at the tax to GDP, mm -hmm. yeah, there are a lot of the... Um, the experts have actually commented on that. I think that there's even figures that suggest that out of a population of uh, 30 million, mm. about just about 1.2 million exactly. actually go out there and mm. pay. Now, there are all sorts of factors. It's multifaceted in terms of the fact that we have a, a very vast informal sector. And that's why we've all agreed that it's imperative that we have a national identification and digitizing mm. the uh, economy to the point where we'll be able to expand that particular mm. base issues to be compliance, issues mm -hmm. to do with uh, uh, giving up exemptions, uh, what even the local um, or if like the district assembly level able mm -hmm. to do in terms of property, I, see, property I hear you rates, talk about property repayment and, yeah, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. These are things that are already there as part of the architecture. Mm -hmm. What has not been very successful is the way of executing in terms of implementation of this. But you've cut, now, you've cut I the know statutory that, funds. Uh, no, no. If, when, if when you, the, cap, when you if say, cap them, no, no, no. You see, the disbursements see, become a see, problem, see, don't they? You see, it, it, then the conversation becomes a bit more technical. So there are rigidities. I mean, he, he appreciates within the the, the budget and cell of the economy where you have an issue to do with one. You have your statutory payments. You also have your commitments in terms of interest payments. Then you have public sector wages and other commitments of government. Now, if you put that together as a pot, it's almost mm. akin to uh, a normal household, mm. right? So you put that in a pot, right? And you have to be able to find a way of ensuring that every single aspect or every sector mm. gets some investment, right? Right. Mm. Then it's imperative. So because if you look at it from that, um, if, if like cash free, you take a, just a cash free look at it, and so you've capped it, then you'll be moving away from the reality. And the reality is Which that is a certain percentage of those resources would have to be capped, mm. right, in, to ensure that other sectors of the economy and other areas that government has a commitment to are also catered are we, for. Are we looking at so, the negative ripple effect it, of, it, no, say, capping uh, a district's uh, common fund? No, no, no. Where I think that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are missing the point. Mm. So if it says it's capped at 25%, mm then it means that some rationalization has been done right, within right. the budget. And that I'm saying that it will have a ripple effect. That, but it's this, those are the decisions that are meant to be taken by any, any government. Mm. These are hard decisions. These are, and that's why governments are voted for, where you're main, meant to make decisions that would inure to the general good of everybody. So let's assume that, for instance, you pay your statutory mm. payments all right, but at the end of the month, you do not have enough money to pay for public sector public wages. Sector. That is another challenge. So you need, that is what we call economic management, mm. right? So with all of this in terms of what your monetary policy mm. would be, mm. your fiscal policy and revenue targets and how you generate revenue and resources within mm. the, the, the state, it's what is put into a basket and it's done in a way that every sector would have at least some injection. So but we've not even spoken about mm. the work that has been done in terms of the railway development. All of these but, things but, are but, things but, that but, but, have been Eric, done Eric. that points to, mm. points to an economy that is on the right trajectory. I'm not going to sit here and uh, pretend that we do not have challenges or uh, there's no room for us to improve in terms of our uh, revenue mobilization mm. or even how we efficiently uh, expand resources. I'm not going to sit here and say that. There's always a room for that. But, but Eric, you... So when we're having these conversations, sometimes it's imperative that we decouple the politics from the economics. So I'm so asking... I'm asking even when let, you let, want me, to, let, me, yeah, let me ask yeah. a simple question. You have 
a fiscal responsibility act. Measure, measure or act yeah, yeah. that puts it at five percent yeah. that you cannot have a deficit more than five yes. percent then on the other hand you cap the statutory funds that must come to them i am trying to marry the no, no, two but i think that i'm journey, trying to, i'm trying to yeah. marry the two to say you say i cannot spend up until this point but even what you are giving me to spend, you have capped that also. No, but because the thing and is, your that explanation the, is that in the so ideal, that other sectors must no, no, also no, get money. So in an ideal setting, where you have the benefit of all the sixty-seven billion, billion mm. right? Mm. You can do whatever you want. It means that every particular sector, in terms of what you have projected for, would receive that money. But you see, we run a budget that is based on projections. Okay, okay. we are assuming that we would get. We are projecting that we'll get 67. If we get 67, we would invest, let's say, a certain percentage of this okay. in this, in that, in that. But of course, you don't have 67 billion sitting there. That, and that's what Rob yeah, yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm not seeing the, the aggressive, yeah, yeah, aggressive yeah, measure to can, get the 67 he, million. He, he can say that, mm. right? Mm. But I know for a fact that the folks that work at the finance ministry, together with the guys who work at the GRE, mm. have put in measures to ensure that we get through close to this mark, if not mm. even achieving it, right? And you know that there's been some changes at the GRA mm. and the mm. work that they've mm. been done right. and all that. So for me, I think that sometimes, whilst it's important that people express, it, express these views, a certain level of cynicism, or if you like, mm. skepticism, is not really good for, okay. even economic, the economists will tell you that. Okay. Let's, let's uh, all put our mm. hands on the wheel and say that, listen, this is what we do. Let, I have let, to pay my mm. way, you have to pay, everybody has to let, do let so. Let me ask you. And then, again, mm -hmm. like I sit here, it's one of my pet peeves. I, I think that even there are certain assemblies within this country that do actually do not need government subventions, right? right? If really we are minded by doing the right thing and ensuring that they're able to yeah, appreciate the IGF, the IGF and execute it at that particular level. Uh, let, me, let me quickly ask you this. So the, the conversation now is to the uh, informal sector, given the fact that they are plenty and they are, most of them don't pay. I always have had a problem with masons and carpenters and plumbers and who steel more than me and you. who earn more than me and you <laughs> in suit and tie on a daily basis, mm -hmm. 120 cities, 100 cities, mm -hmm. and they go tax-free. Yet they are the first to scream and say, acquiring yet a public toilet and all of that. Mm -hmm. How do we bring them? Because I've not, I've not, in this budget and in the previous one, I have not seen how our plan is to bring them in so that we can get the 67 billion we're talking about. Well, you see... It's a very, I mean, it's a conversation that was being had when I was a child, okay. I mean, expanding the, <laughs> uh, uh, the tax, the tax net. net. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that the advent of technology is going to help, and okay. this whole digitization agenda is imperative. Now, these people have a need to go and assess government services. Mm -hmm. You, you understand, right. either they're looking for an ID card, or mm -hmm. they're going to a driver's mm -hmm. license, mm -hmm. or they're going for um, a passport, or I mean, other, procure right. other government services. And I think that once you're able to identify them, which is one key, mm -hmm. and know where they are, and what they do, and everything, then you can go from there until the next stage mm -hmm. of ensuring that, like for instance, nowadays, I think you need a TIN number, for instance, to apply for a passport, I'm not right, too sure, right. on, and yes, all of those, which means that you would have to be registered as a taxpayer, right, and as part of the requirements for you to be able to access these services, mm -hmm. even to open a bank account and all of those things, then those are organic steps that mm -hmm. will take you, because you can't uh, wake up one morning and decide that you are formalized mm -hmm. an informal sector, which has been like this for a very long time. We have the uh, benefit of mobile money and all of these things, and people are even using it for microcredit and microinsurance and all sorts of these things. So I think that we are in a good place. It's just that bringing all the key. Um, are you happy with the pace? Get, it, it can be slow, but we've made progress. I mean, last uh, last count, uh, the National Identification Authority said they've actually issued more than two million cards. So we've, okay. we've made progress, but. There's a lot more to be done okay. and a lot more sensitization. A lot of people probably would want to pay. If mm -hmm. issues to do it, uh, property rates, for instance, mm -hmm. is there a way? I mean, we've been having this conversation for a very long time. Is there a way of making it easier for people to pay? And digitizing it. And digitizing it. it and so getting, stop you know, so some people come to you. I've had an experience. They say you want to give them a check and they say, 
No. Yeah. You, you understand. Cash. You understand. <laughs> or so you're not even sure if the you. person that you're dealing let, with. Let me bring in Felix now. Yes. I think you're, yeah. I've given you quite some time. Felix. Well, um, so Professor really? says that our projection is too ambitious. We couldn't hit our 58. We beat it down to 54. And now we're talking 67. He wonders how we will make the difference because he doesn't see any aggressive uh, measure that we put in place. What do you think? Well, Johnny, I mean, there's, there's absolute merit in the professor's, professor's position. Because what you would expect that men to do is to learn from previous mistakes and take steps that avoid those mistakes. But it does not appear like, uh, it does not appear that this government is interested in, in, in correcting its mistakes. So they continue to project revenue over and above their true capacity to collect. And so at the end of the day, you see huge shortfalls. Mm -hmm. Now the difficulty with this is that they also make their expenditure projections on the basis of this, this projected revenue. So okay. once the revenue does not come, they are unable to make the expenditure. And mm -hmm. then they leave Ghanaians in the ledge. People who look forward to benefiting from the expenditure that was projected in the budget, mm -hmm. budget don't derive any particular benefit. So that is it. But you see, in spite of the... And last year, there was a shortfall of about 5 billion Ghana yeah. which the finance minister articulated in the budget. But in spite of that shortfall, they have still had sufficient revenue, in my view, to have been able to make far more impact than they are currently doing. In tax revenue alone, in the last three years, they've had over 100 billion Ghana cities, just tax revenue. In addition to that... Our public debt has gone up by 90 billion Ghana cities, or $18 billion. Oil revenue alone has given them about 14 billion Ghana cities. On the average, every year they get about 4 billion. In 2016, we got only 940 million Ghana cities, but they get 4 billion on the average. Grants alone, in the last three years, have totaled about 3.2 billion Ghana cities. In addition to this, there are some state owned enterprises that have borrowed on behalf of government. One of them is GMPC. They took a $200 million facility. Mm. Only recently, Cocoa Bot 2 has taken $600 million for some work in the cocoa sector. Similar so package. they've had mm. a lot of revenue. But what has been outstanding is the application of those resources. They have completely misapplied them. For instance, uh, the CDD came up with a report earlier in the year mm. that in the last three years, up to 9 billion Ghana cities have been lost to corruption. Mm. In addition to this, you look at the, the, the breakdown. The government has challenged that figure. Well, well, they have not challenged it. I mean, they how have. They, why? The is it not, why? All the CDD has done is to add up the monies we've lost through corruption. No, no, but I see. But that is true. Look, as I speak, oh, but let me make my point, Eric. Eric, let me make my point. It's only really, fair no, that the, I make the my point. The government has challenged that figure. Well, it is, you see, why? Government challenges everything. Even the Australia visa scandal. They claim that they can't find who did it. Meanwhile, we know that the thing happened. So it's not about government's challenge, it's about the facts that exist on the ground. Why? The Mitilino scandal. Was it not inflated by $800 million? Are they, are they going to challenge that? The, the, the bust moving peanut scandal was 5 million liters of oil not given illegally to an entity that was neither registered or licensed to, to carry out business in the downstream sector. So, so, so the evidence exists for the so, corruption. So you're, you're, you're raised a point that... So I'm, look, I'm coming to the you, point you're, about you're the point that mm -hmm. government, for example, mm -hmm. projects... Mm -hmm. They are not able to collect, to collect mm -hmm. and they plan according to the projections mm -hmm. so then Ghanaians are left behind. Absolutely. How can, how can they do better? But you see, it is simple. So your, your revenue projections have to be realistic. Okay. And it is not rocket science. There are models that you use to do these things. So you learn from previous experience and take steps to ensure that you don't fall in the how same... How many times the same shot allow, allow, well, you see, very, It does not matter. Look, it does not matter. Like, 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 it is even time. worse. Please look, note your look, it is even worse. It is even worse to say that we did not meet our revenue target. So if you do not meet it... No, but you see, why? How many times did you meet your revenue target? It was the former chancellor of Germany, Otto von Bismarck, who said, rather famously, that you see, a fool learns from his own mistakes. But the wise man learns from the mistakes of others. So if you have the example of a previous government that was having difficulty meeting its revenue targets, mm. and you come into power, and for three continuous years, you have failed to meet your revenue targets, then you clearly our, have not our, been up to task. Oh, but, but, but no, 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 your performance has not been better. You see, all that it means is that Ghanaians have entrusted more resources into your hands than your predecessors. That's all that it means. Because we didn't have a luxury car tax. Mm, okay. We had not decoupled NHIL from Get Fund to, to, to increase VAT by 5%. We had not extended the national fiscal stabilization levy. We hadn't. Mm. We had not increased CST. We had not increased ESLA. You did all these things. It means that you have taken more money from the people of Ghana. But it's when it comes to applying it, you misapply it. Look at this, the breakdown that you, you just read in the finder mm -hmm. about how much government, the 7.7 billion. Right. One of the expenditure lines is that government communication is going to be given 6 million Ghana cities. 
out of the taxpayers' money, essentially uh, serial callers and people who go on radio to sleep. But that's what it is. Yes, but look, is that that's what they did? Is that what they did? Johnny, Johnny, listen, yes. Yes. <laughs> I was at the information ministry. Okay. I was in charge at the point uh -huh. of government communication. Okay. So how much money did you spend? Alive, alive. You see, the regular budgetary allocation takes care of the press conference, that the media press series, and official engagements that government engages in. This one, what they call government communication, is an amorphous collection. Of oh, some appointees, you know but I know because I've been there. That's what it is. Listen, listen, listen. How did you introduce him? A member of the government communication right. team. Yeah. And you think I get paid I to be a member of the government? I beg your pardon. No, no, Johnny, Johnny, no. if you if you relax. A member of the MVP's communication. Yeah. Team. By, by his government communication. Yeah. Forget about the, the, the blame of the lies. This budget item, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, is not part of the regular Ministry of Information budgetary allocation. Wow. They have set it aside to be able to pay serial callers and people like Eric who go on TV and radio to defend government mm -hmm. position. That is what I mean, it is. Come on, I think that it has listen, to but that is what it is. Nobody has paid but, me anything. But, but if you have listen, evidence listen, of listen, somebody you paying know, money you know, to listen, come listen, on TV, pay Eric. No, no, come on. I mean, of, don't, don't personalize listen, this. Listen, listen, I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not, I'm not personalizing. I only used you as an example. No, but you don't. You shouldn't. No, I'm not personalizing you, Eric. Eric, listen to me. I think I should withdraw that. Listen to me. I'm not saying that you have taken money. Listen, listen to me. It's not happy about you. Johnny, Johnny, listen to me. I have not said that he has been paid illegally i have not said so if i, I said haven't been paid anything fine but i'm saying that you have of course but the budget has just been read has okay. it not yeah and you've put in six million dollars to be collected for expenditure on the government communication what, what does it? government but i'm telling government mean? listen it what does government communication mean it simply means that there's a ministry of information in charge of that mm. they have a regular budgetary allocation that takes care of the activities and incorporated in that is money that will be spent on the regular business of communicating government's position so the media press series, when I was there, we used mm. to have about 80 of them in a year. Right. We also make space for special occasions where there are emergencies and some matters that require urgent intervention. So that goes in regularly. And when you go to parliament, I have gone to parliament information communication committee mm. to defend the budget estimates before. What they have done did, did is you, an extraordinary... Did you also have party boys and I, look, uh, serial callers okay. and all of that? Of course, but they have existed. But there was never a line... Did you also line. pay them? No, there was never a line dedicated to paying them. You recall that it is not the first time the MPP is doing this. You recall that in, when they were in power up to 2008, mm. you recall the infamous incident involved the third debt recovery level, mm. where it was determined that after collecting taxes from Ghanaians to pay for a debt at all, they were actually hiving off part of the money to pay the same people they call government communication team members. So the point I'm making is that they collect all these monies and yet are not able to do the things that matter to the people, but they expend the money on frivolous expenditure that go to promote the creature comfort. That's the point I'm making. Okay. So they I, must they I, must break. You, look, you look at this. Look, look, out of the six hundred million dollars that Coco Board went to collect, they are spending a whopping two point five million, almost eleven to twelve million Ghana cities on the promotion of consumption of cocoa and chocolate. Why would government engage in such wasteful expenditure? Meanwhile, I'm sure that the cocoa farmer could do with this amount of money. How much, to would, have, how much would have been enough to do that? Promotion? We don't need that. Everybody knows that the consumption of cocoa is great. It is a business of the entities engaged in the production of chocolate mm -hmm. and cocoa products to market them. Cocoa pot should not be in the business of doing that on behalf of them. So these are monies that you see clearly. They are high enough to do other things because it does not make sense other things with like the greatest respect to them. Other things like well, they are, they are going to have to explain because, Johnny, if you are an off the car of cocoa, mm. you, for instance, this tie that you are wearing, mm. if you produce it yourself, is it the business of government to come and promote it for you simply because you do it in Ghana? It does not make sense with the greatest respect to them. Okay, so answer, so, answer my yes. question mm -hmm. on the how to bring the informal sector in because that for me is a big Again, there's a, there's a What huge, was your plan? Johnny, there's a huge misconception. Okay. I agree with the general principle that we need to rope in as much as uh, uh, as many people as possible mm -hmm. to the tax net. But it is erroneous to say that there are some people who don't pay taxes in Ghana. By, by the nature of our tax arrangements, there are direct and indirect taxes. Right. VAT is a form of indirect taxation. Mm -hmm. So everybody pays. Right. Everybody who sits in the trotro, because fuel products are taxed, and transport operators pass on the cost okay. to, to, uh, to passengers. passengers. Everybody pays a certain tax. But of course, you and I, if we work in the formal sector, get mm. what we call pay, pay mm. as you earn. It right. is deducted mm. as well. So, so, tax so it that. hits you. And very few people are in that bracket. So it hits you. Okay. If that could be expanded mm. to include people in the informal sector, mm. it would be great. But I don't think that... It is, a, it is correct to say that some people do well, not pay. I mean, but of course, if, but I if agree. We are, but if we are all paying but income tax yeah, and the, the rest, the they minister, should also be you paying see, for The it. minister announced measures that he says would improve tax collection. I'm all for it. I hope that he's able to implement those and get okay. it. But for me, the collection is just as important as the expenditure. expenditure. Okay. And instead of spend, look, look at the size of government. Mm. 125 ministers. Look at all the creature comforts we have to pay for salaries, cars, and what have you. If they could cut down that number, we will make significant savings that can be plowed back 
into investing the in the things that matter to people. They are essential. They are not essential. No, Look, it is not essential to have a procurement minister. Oh. We don't need a planning minister. We don't need a monetary minister. Why? We don't need a business Why? development Why minister. Why do you say that? Why? There's a public procurement authority mm. that has a, a, a legal mandate yeah, no, to superintend that. procurement in this country. The minister in charge of that entity is actually the finance minister. So if there's a minister already supervising the work of the public procurement authority, what do we need a procurement minister for? In any event, since she has been in office, and I'm not personalizing it, it's not about her, mm. it's about the position. Since she has been in office, can they argue that procurement breaches have gone down? The public procurement authority itself, was it not embroiled in the procurement scandal? The NYE, NYE was able to engage in uh, what you call it, some procurement without going through the procurement process. And there are many, many, many of those. So, so when, when, when they come and make the, the claim that these are essential, they are not. Look, business development manager. And Eric is a businessman, so he knows that the Ministry of Trade have adequate capacity and manpower to be able to take care of the needs of the business community. You don't need another but, but, but ministry. But you've not seen Dr. Wiles, look, uh, look, look, Dr. Wiles look, exploits, no, giving listen, scholarship, look, giving look, stimulus I package. Cut, listen, I cut my public... You've not seen listen, all listen, those listen, ones. I cut my public service teeth at the Ministry of Trade as an attorney's assistant. I can assure you that the Ministry of Trade has adequate capacity to be able to take care of the needs of the... All you need is a special desk who are charged with business promotion and business development. You don't need a minister for that. You don't need to create a whole organization for it. Every ministry has what they call PPME, right. Policy Planning Monitoring Evaluation. That's right. So you don't need a planning minister, you don't need a monetary minister. You certainly don't need, uh, what do you call it, a, a special development initiatives minister. When all she is doing is taking money spent for these assemblies to construct toilets and, and boreholes. That is a regular function. Okay, Look, thank you. Look, before I land, there's a, no, there's a final point. One <laughs> point. You can leave the rest of the, of the time to But you, Look, you've expanded all the time. You have, you have, you have, you have, you have Look, landed. There's, there's a department at the Ministry of Works and Housing. Mm. It is called Community Water and Sanitation Division. Right. Look, the sum total mm. of all the work that the Special Development Initiative Minister has done is equal to what that small entity did when we were in power. So you don't need to create ministries in order to be able to carry out some mundane functions of government. It is wasteful. And if they cut down on that mm. and limit corruption, we won't have the sort of shortfalls or gaps in our revenue that we are talking about. Okay. You see, Johnny, Eric. Johnny, I mean, um, you're both... Do, do, you, do you get paid I, for uh, doing I mean, government I, communication? No, no, I don't get paid. And I think that fellas should take that back. I mean, but um, I know knowing fellas, he won't do it. Listen, this is coming from a group that use Ministry of Health resources to commission Cambridge Analytica and pay them $5 million to uh, do research for the NDC when they were in power. You, you understand what I'm saying? So that when 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 you when you when you when you when you sit I hope that I have to when, when you, you have sit have when you sit uh, when you sit on platforms like this and you erroneously or you, 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 you intentionally try to paint a picture that does not exist. What is uh, uh, marketing and promotion for the cocoa industry? What does it even entail? What goes into it? What, you, could have, you, could have, you could have actually drilled down and found out exactly what is it. Tell me, there. what do you, and what see, do you intend this to hypocrisy, do this hypocrisy with that money? And double standards. It's wrong. It's nauseating. Yesterday, we were having conversations on platforms like this, talking mm. about how government should support the rice industry OBC, in terms yeah. of marketing and all of those things. And then, in one breath, if government is supporting the cocoa industry, which has probably single-handedly contributed more to the economy than any sector in the economy. So, so CPC that, is, that is... No, no, no. But that CPC, is not just... A whole but CPC is that just that one entity. Now, so even, entity even, listen, <laughs> even it's just one entity. Even the benefits, the, uh, the, the, the um, nutritional benefits and the active ingredients that is in the cocoa and what is used for and other things that can be done and work that has been done by other research agencies in terms of what you can use cocoa for. We are sitting here talking about value addition, mm. adding value to our cocoa. Because if we talk, we're spoken about industry but, but that is a 200 that billion... But open the floodgates no, but for everybody it, saying salt... No, but, 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 but is it... But, but, but is it... Coconuts, LSE, promoters... But is it... It is not. It is not. Is it... Because I come from a background where 
marketing and communication is almost pushed to the bagger until something happens. We live in this country where we ask that we expect uh, monies to be given to NCC and other agencies to educate the populace. We're talking about issues to do with referendum and all that. All these things are functions of communication. Now, if you want to promote chocolate or cocoa products, right, and that would actually stimulate growth within the, the sector and even bring attention to that particular sector and, and gender interest, and people would go in there to invest and become entrepreneurial and bring jobs and employment to this. The ripple effect is is no what, what's, what's the, what's, what's the no, I haven't for the seen, six million no but for, the thing is that you, yeah, but I, I, I have seen I have seen the, the, the broad document the table, yeah. in terms of what drilling down to the specifics. I do not have that. Yeah, but to yes, sit here <laughs> and speculate and I'm not conjecture I'm, I'm, and I'm say I'm that, not and then I'm even when you say that, that yes, if I hear today, no, but what is what, in, 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 two, three, no, 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 but is it? These are purely propaganda <laughs> agenda. <laughs> of the NDC. Tell us what Listen, even when you talk about what is government communication, for instance, what do you? No, no, but that is not. But you know, you understand? The government is an entity that sits there and does all sort of things, the programs, policies. So, so there's six and million, of, what is it yeah, going to be used for? No, I want but, to know. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. That I have not drilled down okay, to the so specifics. The, the specific, okay. But to claim, to sit here and claim that because under your watch, mm. you used to do the same thing, is money that is being paid to serial callers uh, and we, people we, we who come. No, yeah, we didn't but that's what I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying. Let's go to come, then you have a buy for it. Christophe, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Messages coming in. Walanyo in Akwetia says, NDC shamefully has refused this time around to make comments about the deplorable conditions of our roads across the country because they have lied to us in their famous green book that they have constructed massive roads. But where are the roads when people are crying for roads everywhere? NDC is exposed and there's no way they can lie to us to the presidency. Uh, opposition will forever be their reward. John Lee Lante Vanderpoy says deception, talk shop, and lip service. Right, right, These are three to words to describe to best describe oh, the conduct of this government. Wait, on, we are fatigued. Mm -hmm. Every every day oh, no. we are, we are, we are. When will we hear ah, we have yeah. from this government? Uh, is NDC the only yardstick for NPP in the world? We know the policies NPP said are, are rolling, but my question is how well are these policies being implemented? It's only in Ghana that inflation is coming down on cost of living and cost of living is on the ascendancy. Please, please, is this um, the men, are these the men they claim to have? Atafa from Asebu. Um, Alaji Hamza Pig Farm says, from Pig Farm says, Johnny, I hope you are not going to fall for this cheap propaganda from Eric. I would like to find out from Eric that, that recently, I would like to find out from Eric that recently we were told $2.2 billion has been released to pay road contractors for work done since 2016. So if roads were not constructed in Mahama's regime, th then, what, then what are they paying for? Eric should be telling Ghanaians what we sought um, to his sack from what we sorted to his sack from former place of his former place of work and stop that cheap propaganda he's doing. Please, Johnny, as the NPP man that no NAPCO personnel has been paid for the past two months, so they should stop talking about NAPCO. And if you cannot pay that, if they cannot pay, they should they should not employ. Johnny, please be fair to the NPP man as you give him as you give more time to Felix, but you keep on interjecting Eric on every sentence he he makes. <laughs> That's uh, from so Kofi Senyo. You know Charles true. Nyame Asamankes <laughs> in Asamankes says Ghanaians in 2016 thought they were changing John Mahama and the NDC for a better alternative. Unfortunately, we ended up bringing in a small group of family and friends who maliciously came to dupe the whole country for their selfish interests. Thank God there's another opportunity next year to correct the mistake by sending NPP talkatives back to opposition. Nash in Sagnarugu uh, says, Good morning to you guys, especially to Eric. But tell the NDC propaganda comrades um, to stop building castles in the air. After all, NPP has, for free, has um, fulfilled the promises and even are overdoing. May the good people of Ghana continue to vote massively for NPP come 2020. It's obvious the NPP parliamentarians are running from their own budgets they presented to Parliament, hence the absenteeism. The majority in Parliament should step up their game since they claimed to be the master of their own game 
and act as leaders and stop the hide and seek with the minority. Summit, Adam yeah. Jamal from yeah. Pengini in the Ketu North Municipal of the Water Region sends that comment. Good morning to you all, please. The government should not be emphasizing on teachers and nurses only, but should also employ we, the non-teaching staff that have also completed school and are looking for jobs. It's about time they employed the non-teachers too. That's from Saada Ibrahim from WA. Good morning, TV3. Please let the politicians know that Ghanaians are not stupid as they think. We are aware who is lying and who tells the truth. Therefore, tell the MPP man not to be struggling to convince we, the Ghanaians. Uh, we know the truth from everyone's comments. Mahama uh, from Navrongo. Good morning, TV3. Interesting discussions there. But why can't Felix be a little progressive about his submissions? We are seeing through the propaganda. It's Okay to, it's okay to hit your opponent some of the time, but I think he's overdoing it. Felix, please give us alternatives. Good day from Nanayao. A.U. Farouk, this is our last comment for the morning. A.U. Mm -hmm. Far, uh, Farouk um, in Tamale North constituency says, Good morning. How can a serious government um, allocate 6 million Ghana cities of uh, the poor taxpayers' money to, a party, to party communicators? No wonder Honorable Kennedy Japan once described MPP government as a useless entity. That's okay, thank you very much, Crystal, and thanks for your messages. And um, even Eric was shocked when you said that I kept, uh, I gave him a little <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm it's my checking. Don't worry, it's okay. Is he coming? No, no, they are observing. You're, you're supporting them. In fact, today, today you have actually had more time. No, that, that, that can never be. No, you have had more time. Can you see the misapplication is even more worrying? When you consider, but doesn't yeah, yeah. Yes, I but do. You when, 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 when you consider the opportunity cost, look, as I was coming here this morning, I watched a, a brief news item which showed that several weeks into the reopening of schools, schools still do not have textbooks. Well, they are not going to write exam. This, but, but, uh, but, but Johnny, what kind of education system are we building? So the education system has had to be messed up. Because government cannot find money to print yeah, textbooks. Not, students. government didn't say they are not finding money. So what, what accounts for? The printing is in process. What pr look, and that Johnny, the, are you telling me? And the parts that were given Johnny, to the teachers so and the training. So it speaks, Johnny, Johnny, no, it is not adequate. We have all been to school. There's no way you are going to have any serious teaching and learning. But no, allow the teachers book. to complain. No, no, but who says the teachers cannot complain? Why? The gag orders that they've, they've, they've imposed on those teachers, even headmasters, hmm? the headmaster mm. of Agri Memorial Zion, was removed because he complained about problems. No, that's never true. So, this, Johnny, is a, this is a government a that is that prioritizing frivolous expenditure. In that is more interested in spending money on serial callers and communicators. No, that that wants true. to promote cocoa for 12 million okay, Ghana cities. Thank you. When they cannot print us. Uh, Eric, I have an interest in the ambulances packed and frontage of parliament. And well, I'm, that I'm that asking is the question. I say, look, sound of if we couldn't wait for enough. Uh, dormitories, classrooms, textbooks, whatever, and even now for the new curriculum, we couldn't wait for all the things that we had to start. Is that a question or uh, no? I'm I'm saying I'm okay. putting two things together. I'm saying for free SHS, mm -hmm. we didn't have the full complement of everything, but we said we can't wait. We need to start. It's important. The new curriculum, we didn't have full complement. We said we can't wait. We started. Why do we have to wait to get the full complement of 307 ambulances imported? before we start distribution. Okay, so I have listened to the, the minister in charge and she made, I think, three points. Mm. First point is that, um, the, of course, there's the, the full complement of the ambulances are not yet, but tracking devices are going to be put on mm. these ambulances. Mm. The personnel, because it's an ambulance, so you would have to have paramedics on board because okay. they have special equipment that mm. needs to be mm. operated. I've been are being trained to mm. do so. Mm. Again, you also have, um, I think there was a third one, which had to do with uh, a service, part of the service level uh, agreement, mm. which meant that you'd have to have the uh, suppliers set up maintenance depots locally to be able to do okay. it when they break okay. down. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, the process hasn't been uh, finished yet. It hasn't got to the finality yet. Okay. So of course, um, Again, I mean, my position on these matters is that it's okay for people to push government and criticize and say, why haven't you done it? But because a process has to be followed, and if it needs a striking device, that would ensure that people are not using it for mm. things that are unauthorized. If it has to be maintained, because one, it's one thing having the okay. vehicle 
and then it comes into the system. These are not allowable devices. Great for trading devices. Don't take for allow. No, but I have had a trading device installed in my bedroom. We take just allow trading devices. Thank you. So what are the issues? Eric, they just want to. It's a matter of the MPP communication team is here. It was here on behalf of the MPP, of course, and Felix. Kwachu Fusu is a former deputy minister for communications. He's also the NDC's parliamentary candidate for the Abra Sebu Kwamankesi constituency in the central region. Gentlemen, thank you very much for thank your thank time. You. This Saturday, 23rd of November, Hotcast is 50, and we'll all be congregating uh, there to, at 10 a.m., so you can't miss it out. Good morning to you, Mr. Tommy Anand Forsing. And um, it's important to state here that when the politicians come, we can't give them blank checks. When they talk, we will interrogate and ask questions. Uh, it's not a campaign platform, by the way.